just received this in the post earlier today. I waited patiently until a reasonable time to open it. <laughs> Finally it's here. I'm excited. It's a short book with lovely illustrations. Uh, and I want to read it to you. It's meant to be read to you. Rupert and the Lost Garden. Rupert didn't like going to the doctor. The dentist was no fun. He went with you to both. Because two of you were stronger than one. He hated trains and aeroplanes. Any place that made you uneasy. Any place that made him wobble some. He was prone to motion sickness. The washer and the dryer were the worst ones. As the softest teddy bear, he had a very serious job. First and foremost, he was to be toted under your arm. To comfort you, ease your pain, and protect you from all harm. Each time he felt your unease from his point of view, he knew you'd take him with you, as you needed him to comfort you. Every storm you stayed up through, every sleepover since you were two, Every doctor's appointment in the books. Every trip. Every weekend. Every holiday you took. Rupert felt each feeling you did. He attended each place you feared. So, more often than not, he felt bad, anxious, weird. But there was one place you both loved. A place that didn't make him wobble. A place that didn't make him feel sad, grumpy, or worried sick. It was a place that gave him butterflies, at the very thought of it. The botanical garden. He loved to be in the warm sunlight among the birds, trees, and flowers, identifying the plants and insects, studying the ecosystem for hours, enjoying the surrounding blooms next to you, as you read or picnicked in the grass. The garden sundial was his favourite spot to watch time slowly pass. Today, the garden looked very different from Rupert's point of view. It was dark, and there were tall hedge walls as you approached. Two iron gates now, with cobwebs woven through. A giant spider perched on the turnstile at the entrance queue. Had the gardens been transformed into a maze? If so, it seemed fitting for Halloween today. The only other time he'd taken him to the garden this late was to use the bigger telescope stationed there to stargaze. Everything looked spooky along the unknown path. Your hesitancy to round each corner made Rupert feel quite bad. A surprise, a haunting, a spook here and there. Were we going in circles? Had we already been here? Every turn came with a new sense of dread as you followed the path and the maze misled. Rupert hated tricks. They made him feel nervous. He didn't like to wobble. His favourite garden dressed as a haunting maze was nothing but trouble. What if we get lost here and we're never found? There were strange lights and even stranger sounds. Flashing strobe lights, a giant skeleton, a frog hopping out of a cauldron stirred. Creaking, moaning, a screeching yelp. Sounds that Rupert 
had never heard. Being this scared that underneath your arm felt serious, in a maze, so absurd. He saw a ghost. It was howling as it floated by, on two feet that looked curiously human-like. He saw a vampire, with fangs so sharp, who hissed with hands clenched like claws in the dark. He saw Frankenstein, a green monster, with bolts embedded in his throat. The tower viewer, once just binoculars, was now a chilling scarecrow. None of this looked the same. Everything looked different now. This flower-filled oasis had wilted and turned upside down somehow. He stopped walking and backed up to the hedge wall. You were trembling and crouching, looking scared and small. Rupert readied himself on your arm, prepared to provide a big hug. Instead, you felt you loosen your grip, and he was no longer warm and snug. This was very strange. Rupert felt your breathing change. One, two, three, four. He heard you whisper as you inhaled your chest expanding widely. He held his breath with you, then you each released it slowly. The maze must have won. Defeated, you felt dumb. Rupert thought that maybe the two of you weren't ready. Again you took a breath, and now your hands began to steady. It's scary to feel lost, to not know which direction to take when you freeze. But you took a step forward without giving Rupert a squeeze. Rupert was proud and overcome with amazement. Your sense of courage was new territory. You didn't need his help to reframe it. Two zombies were slumped over, seeming hungry and wary. A giant minotaur was crouched behind the topiary. This was a never-ending labyrinth, home to creatures so scary. Where the rose garden once was, now a graveyard scattered with tombs. The grim reaper was carrying a candy apple, and a witch galloped on a broom. He hated every strange moment, lost at a place he once knew, until he saw an astronaut catching up to you. Excuse me, do you know which way the meteor shower viewing will be? Meteor shower, Rippert thought. Surprised, he heard your voice sound excited. Oh good, I'm looking too. Let's head this way together. I'll follow you. What's this? A star viewing event? Rupert felt a sudden sense of calm. It's what he'd wanted you two to do all along. Rupert always admired the night sky. Looking up at the stars aglow, he knew that the best view was from the big garden telescope. It was his favorite place to be, stargazing at night. He loved to discover what could make the darkness bright. As the softest teddy bear, he had a very serious job. First and foremost, he was to be toted under your arm. To comfort you, ease your pain, and protect you from all harm. But now, at a meteor shower, everything looked so new. This kind of storm was worth waiting for. It did not frighten you. Not like those scary thunderstorms you had once stayed up through. The meteors glinted in the sky as they fell, burning bright. 
All of the creatures were onlookers in costume all along, gathered here to celebrate the stars tonight. A special meteor shower, occurring the evening of Halloween. Being lost in the maze was worth it, to be under your arm now, at this lovely, starry scene. Rupert could feel the sense of calm, like a blanket on his heart. Warm and content. He knew you felt the same, as your feelings never part. Rupert always felt what you felt. It's how he knew what to do. He could sense what to do when he needed to comfort you. But tonight, you were lost in the garden. A path without a clue. Rupert couldn't guide you from his point of view. While you were finding the way, is that when he lost you? Did you no longer need his comfort to carry you through? Tonight you led so independently, even through your fear. You kept your head up, even when you clutched him near. You could bring yourself comfort. And even with him in tow, you were always the one self-soothing your woe. As the softest teddy bear, he had a very serious job. First and foremost, he was to be toted under your arm, to comfort you, ease your pain, and protect you from all harm. He realized tonight that this was more for him now than you. This time he witnessed your unease, and from his new point of view, he knew you'd always take him with you. But you no longer needed him to comfort you. Staring up at the meteors in the sky above, Rupert counted the stars and assigned each with a new love. Rupert loved going to the doctor. The dentist was more fun. He now admired trains and aeroplanes. Any place that made you uneasy. Any place that made him wobble some. He was grateful for each memory that he refound on the lost garden with you. Every storm you swayed through, every sleepover since you were two, every doctor's appointment in the books, every trip, every weekend, every holiday you took. Rupert always felt what you felt, but under this starfall, it was new. He could feel that you were stronger now, as one instead of two. Hmm. I hope you found yourself in the story of the Lost Garden, and that it calmed any anxiety you might feel this Halloween. There are lots of things going on in the world around us, and having a Rupert can feel like the only way, but we all have the strength within us to keep going and to find a path. Remember that only we can decide how we deal with anxiety and stress and strain, and being able to do it oneself finding the confidence and the strength and the practice it helps little teddy bears like my friend Rupert here happy Halloween